Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Juan Carlos Gomez Grisales, and I am here to introduce this research project, EFL Students Learning Responses Towards the Use of Video Tutorials Provided as Initiators of Flip English Lessons. My research advisor is Professor Emilena Hernandez Leal, and I am part of Universidad Santo Tomás at Licenciatura en Lengua Extranjera Inglés. This project was carried out in San Gil, Santander, which is a small city located two hours away from Bucaramanga, the capital city of the Department of Santander. The project was carried out at the school Liceo Superior Rafael Pombo, which is a private school where I'm currently working, and it was developed with nine grader students, 19 of them who participated in this project. For the problem statement, I have to say that I was captivated by the flipped learning approach around four years ago through educational networks. Then I started wondering how would this approach work on my classroom because I identified some issues that it was necessary to tackle. Some of the problem of English learning that my students evidence are that they lack of communication and they lack of interaction into the classroom. So I started the literature review in order to go deeper and identify how this approach could work into the English classroom. Then, because of all the information that I found out, I had to narrow the research in order to not to be ambitious. Then finally, I made the decision on working with the video tutorials as part of my research project. Then, I established my research questions. How do EFL students incorporate the content of video tutorials provided as initiators in flip English lessons? Then, the research objective. Determine how EFL students incorporate the content of video tutorials provided as initiators of flip English lessons. For the theoretical framework, I'm going to talk about these three aspects, EFL in Colombia, flipped learning and teaching, and the use of video tutorials in flipped learning. I'm going to start with EFL in Colombia. La Ley General de Educación, emitted in 1994, opened new opportunities for the development of communicative skills in English for the country. However, the path was not very clear for the institutions to take a right way in order to reach these goals. As a result, Colombia still shows a very low proficiency English levels, and everything that happens at the macro level is also going to affect at the micro level. And this can be seen in my institution because there is not a clear path in order to develop the communicative language skills in English. Now I'm going to talk about flip learning and teaching. Flip learning is an instructional approach that enables students to get in contact for the very first time with the content of a particular topic outside the classroom through different resources, including technology-based tools such as videos, but not only videos. It could also be used infographics or other type of documents. And this happens before their first interactions with their teachers. The use of the resources outside the classroom opens opportunities to deepen, extend, and apply a student's understanding of the topics by way of active learning strategies during the in-class time. So it means that the students are going to watch and are going to interact teacher-created or teacher-curated videos and tools. Then, before the face-to-face -face class or at the very beginning of the face-to-face -face session, the teacher is going to check and understand it through a formative assessment. Then the students are going to apply those learnings through hand-on activities in a collaborative way. Similarly, the terms flip learning and flip classroom have been interchanged. Flip classroom is considered a model in which students use different resources outside the classroom and then spend in-class time for practicing what they have studied. It sounds like it's only giving material to the students before the class. On the contrary, flip learning is a student-centered approach, which combining it with other methodologies such as project-based learning, tax-based, inquiry-based, 
or any other active learning methodology makes learning habits. The main tenet for flipped learning is to create a motivating self-learning atmosphere for students and that helps them acquire basic knowledge outside the classroom and then apply and deepen that acquired knowledge inside the classroom. Flipped learning has also been investigated in particular areas of English language learning, such as speaking, writing, reading comprehension, English pronunciation, translation, and grammar development. By freeing up the face-to-face -face sessions and assigning them out of the classroom before the in-class time, teachers have gained classroom time for communicative activities. Prior class, students learned individually and during the in-class, students learn collaboratively, achieving other skills such as autonomy and social communication. Now I'm going to talk about the use of video tutorials in flipped learning. Different tools may be used to share content to the students. However, videos are more appealing to the new generations and allow better self-enrollment of the students and better impact in enhancing learning performance if these videos are used and developed creatively. Besides, technology is considered to function far better for the purposes of repeating, speeding up, or slowing down lectures to match the learner's needs and pace, and to make content accessible at any time. Moreover, students need to self-regulate and concentrate to complete the goals proposed at this stage of the process. Now, Talking about the research design, I'm going to focus on four particular aspects. The type of the study, it was an action research process in which a plan was created, then it was taken into action, it was observed, and then reflected. So the plan was revisited, and then the process started all over again. Now, for the role of the researcher, it was necessary to identify structure and apply an action plan to enhance EFL students' communication skills. I was the person in charge of consulting information, creating an action plan, designing video tutorials, and collecting the data. The data gathering sources were particularly students' artifacts, which refer to the video recording of the lessons. Also, the Edpuzzle platform, which was used in order to post the videos and embedding the questions for the students to answer. And this platform also integrated with Google Classroom, which is the platform used for the school for the delivery of the lessons. Then also it was necessary to apply a questionnaire at the end of the process in order to collect information of the students about the impact of the flipped learning implementation. And also, it was necessary to carry out a teacher's journal in which it was collected all the information about ideas, about improvements that could be used for the next videos and the next lessons. And finally, the data analysis. The criteria to analyze the data was based on the content analysis. All qualitative material gathered through the data sources was systematized into matrices and revise carefully to establish final categories to answer to the research question. To analyze data, we went through data revision, data coding, and reduction and final categorization. In terms of instructional design, we took into account these three orientations. Number one was the communicative language teaching, in which students are involved in meaning-focused communicative tasks so that language learning will occur. Then, the task-based language learning. A task requires the participants to function primarily as language users in the sense that they must employ the same kinds of communicative processes involved in real-world activities. Then, flip learning. Creating a motivating self-learning atmosphere for students that helps them acquire basic knowledge outside the classroom and apply and deepen the acquired knowledge inside the classroom. This is also applicable to the online instruction, to the synchronous online flip learning approach established by Marshall and Rodriguez Buitrago. Now, in terms of pedagogical intervention and taking into account the instructional design, we designed a thematic unit. This was the task, and it was looking for the best tourist place. 
Students access the information through listening and reading activities through the video tutorials. They collected all this information and they needed to learn how to compare the different places in order to determine what was the best tourist place for them to travel. It was two months, 20 sessions and five video tutorials implemented through Flip Learning, in which students before class did the readings and watched the videos. During the class, they participated in activities, discussions, and took quizzes, led by the professor, but centered in the students in order to consolidate understanding. And after the class, what they did is that they completed their consolidation of their understanding and prepared for the next class. Now, what were the findings of our research project? Taking into account the research questions, how do we help students incorporate the content of video tutorials provided as initiators of flipped English lessons? We determine three particular categories. Number one, EFL students activating prior knowledge. EFL students evidencing learning engagement and EFL students showing positive attitudes to watch video tutorials proposed. We're going to watch carefully one by one. Number one, EFL students activating prior knowledge. For this category, we determine these subcategories. Number one, prior knowledge activation to other scenarios. Number two, students incorporating language expressions. Number three, the students using new expressions during in-class activities. Number four, students gained awareness about their role as learners in and out of class. And finally, use of language from videos in further activity. These are some excerpts taken from the video recordings in which we can see that the students are having that interactions with the teachers and also with some other students in order to determine this activation of prior knowledge. In the example one, one of the students made evident that there is a process to carry out the activity according to what he saw on the video tutorial, and that is why he is confirming his understanding. In examples two and three, Prior knowledge activation took place at the level of language and content learning. Then students manifested understanding in regards adjectives and superlative expressions. Finally, in the example four, the students' interactions evidence they had become aware of the use of one particular rule for making comparisons. Now we're going to focus on categories number two. If all students evidencing learning engagement, for this we determine these subcategories. Students spend more time exploring videos and solving quizzes, language engage engagement and commitment, questions and interest towards learning, more participation during in-class activities, and students see the real purposes of English. These are the examples that we took from the video recordings but also in the last example that we can see at the bottom, this was taken from the questionnaire. This is another example in which students are actively participating in class and it was taken from a video recording of the lesson. This graphic shows what was the student's interaction with the video tutorials. They had all these video tutorials and these are the number of amount of time that they were interacting with the video tutorials. The length of the video tutorials in total was 36 minutes, but the students participated around 46 minutes. In example one, the students brought questions to ask during the in-class session. In the example two, one of the students supported on the video tutorial to clarify why she had not performed well on an activity proposed the day before. In example three, the students gave their answers to the questions proposed by the teacher. In the example four, one of the students manifested he wanted to skip some questions proposed by the video tutorial, but he was not able to do it. In consequence, the students had to engage in the former process the platform established. Finally, in examples five, it was possible to identify the time the students took watching the videos. 18 students out of 19 watch all the videos. One student was not able to watch the last videos because of connectivity issues. Besides, 
the platform also informed that most of the students watch the video several times in order to get the correct answers. Now for the final category, student values positively the teacher videos. Students manifested that video length should not be too long. The videos allow the students to gain cultural awareness and the videos help students to become aware of ICT resources useful for learning like Google Maps, Google for buying tickets, etc. These are also the examples that we have, particularly from the questionnaire that we ask the students. Also, in this questionnaire, we ask the students about the length of the videos and most of them said that the length was appropriate. So a student's comments about video tutorial focus on how interactive they were. They were teacher made. Most students considered the videos were appropriate in terms of time length for learning, but also the students comments remarked the use of the Edpuzzle platform, which allowed the interactivity because this tool permitted the embedding of opening questions or multiple choice questions to check students' understanding while they were watching the videos. Students also consider that the in-class sessions were also dynamic and very interesting, and they allowed them to practice what they had previously studied on the video tutorials. Some students used the expression didactic, meaning the lessons were enjoyable and interesting. One student went beyond linguistic features, and she considered that the lessons not only allowed her to learn English, but also have cultural enrichment. From our perception as researchers, the development of tasks within flipped learning involved students in communicative and purposeful use of English, which was to plan their trip and how could this be done by using Google. And what are the conclusions of our research project? Well, flip learning around the world is offering benefits for the students' learning, although the challenges is worth to highlight its endeavor for inclusion and for encouraging student-centered learning. In activation in prior knowledge, students activate their knowledge through listening and reading skills through open and multiple choice questions the video asks. Some students help their partners with questions about the video tutorials. The students also got experience about pre-class setting by analyzing, taking notes, rewinding the videos as many times as it was necessary. And the students took their questions to the in-class sessions for further clarification. Now, in learning engagements, students spend time watching and interacting with the videos. Students' participations in in-class activities also increased as more students ask questions and even some of them help others answering the question. Students were more empowered and committed with their learning process as a result of watching and interacting with the videos proposed. In a student response towards the videos, the students' comments about the video tutorials were very positive. The length of the videos were appropriate for their language level, interesting and also were dynamic. Students also mentioned that the Edpuzzle platform was important for the process. It permitted them to stop the videos to reply questions about the topics recently watched and allowed them to repeat parts of the video they needed to revise deeply. Also, as teacher researchers, we saw Edpuzzle platform that allowed to gather information on every student. The amount of time spent watching each video tutorial, the number of times and visits, parts of videos which needed more revisions, and of course, the scores on the replies. The literature offered useful information for planning and applying videos. The length in interactivity leading teachers' own creations and content development was relevant. Now, what were the pedagogical implications? Probably there was not too much time. If we could have had more extra time, we could have gathered more information and students could have got gotten more involved into the flipped learning process. Also, we had many questions when we were designing the videos. So, for example, are the videos only informative? And how much input do videos need to provide? Additionally, while we're, we're in the classes, the students really had a lack of knowledge about culture and geography. For example, they didn't know some locations about some countries 
they didn't know exactly about the difference in some seasons and weathers, and probably some students haven't even been into an airport. Another situation was the current research project was ready to be implemented last year by April. However, the pandemic changed everything and it was necessary to readapt the whole proposal to activities proposed for the in-class synchronous setting online. And working through online synchronizations allowed us as researchers to record everything in the class sessions. And this resulted in positive factor for the research analysis. Now we're going to see the references of our project. At this moment, I want to thank you very much for your attention and we are open to your questions. Thank you.